Hello and welcome to section 7.2. Today we're going to look at two variables in linear systems. Back in section 7.1, uh, we looked at how we could solve a system of linear equations using, or a system of equations using substitution or graphing. In 7.2, we're going to actually look at using either the combination or elimination method, depending on which textbook you use. That was the um, vocab for them, but this is essentially the one where you try to get the like terms and then add down so you could cancel one of the variables. So our goal for the elimination or combination method is to get one variable to have the same coefficients but different signs so that we can we add the two equations together we can eliminate that variable. And um, to do that what we're going to do is again we want to make sure that we have coefficients and it doesn't matter if you're trying to do x or y whatever's easier to eliminate and we want to have the same coefficients except different signs. Then we're going to add the two equations together. We're going to solve for the um, variable that's left. Once we've solved for that variable we will back substitute in one of the equations and then again we're going to check our solution as a final um, step. So um, let's go ahead and look at example one and see how this is going to work. So in example one, we want to solve the system that has 3x plus 2y equals 10 and 2x plus 5y equals 3. Now, if you notice, both of our x values and both of our y values have coefficients. That's why um, substitution might not necessarily be the easiest method to use because it is going to involve fractions. So um, if we use the elimination method, what we're going to do is we're going to pick one variable, and it doesn't matter, but I'm going to use the variable x, and we want to get both of those variables the same. Now, sometimes you can just multiply one line by a number to get them both the same, but in this case, I am going to have to multiply this line here by 2, and this line here by a negative 3, and again, I'm multiplying, so they can have the same x coefficients. So when I do that, we end up with 6x plus 4y equals 20 and a negative 6x minus 15y equals a negative 9. So now I'm going to add these straight down. My x's are going to cancel. And we're left with a negative 11y equals 11 which tells us that y equals a negative 1. So now I'm going to back substitute or plug that in to one of the equations and it doesn't matter which one so I'm just going to pick the bottom one. So then I have 2x plus 5 times a negative 1 equals 3 which gives me 2x minus 5 equals 3 or 2x equals 8 which means x equals 4. So I've now solved for both x and y and this tells me and I do want to see you write your solution as a coordinate point but my coordinate point is going to be 4 negative 1 and this here would be my final solution. Now if you go and graph this you'll see that you'll have one point of intersection right here at 4, negative 1. You should also be able to plug 4, negative 1 into either one of these equations and get either 10 or 3 out. Example 2 again wants us to solve the system. Now in this case I see that uh, if I try to, or well I guess when I look at my x's I see that both of these are off. They're opposite in sign but they're off by a factor of 2 and my y's are off they have different signs, but again, they're not the same. So if I choose to eliminate my x's, all I'm going to have to do here is multiply my top row by a positive 2. And this is going to give me 14x plus 16y equals 12. And my second equation, my negative 14x minus 6y equals a negative 12 is the same. And I do apologize, your original equation, this should have been a 16, which makes that a 16. So now when we go ahead and we add straight down, you will see that your 14, or your x's are going to cancel. 
positive 16y, negative 16y gives me 0 equals 0. Now when something like this happens and you end up with 0 equals 0, this is a true statement because 0 does equal 0, and this tells me that we have infinitely many solutions. And the reason there's infinitely many solutions is because these are the same line. So, you, all you'd have to write down is that there are infinitely many solutions. For example 3, we want to solve the system 6x minus 5y equals 3, and a negative 12x plus 10y equals 5. Again, um, just because I see, well in this case it doesn't really matter, I'm actually going to go and try to cancel out my y's, because I see that if I multiply my top equation by 2, my y's are off by a sign and a value of, or a factor of 2. So I end up with 12x minus 10y equals 6, and I have a negative 12x plus 10y equals 5. So now when I go to add these, my x's are going to cancel, my y's are going to cancel, and I'm left with 0 equals 11. Well, in this case, this is not true. And because this is not true, this tells me that this system has no solution. And as we talk about here in a few minutes, we're going to say that this is an inconsistent system because it has no solution. And again, we'll go over that here in just a few moments. So when we look at a system of two linear equations and two variables, we have three different possibilities for the number of solutions. We can have exactly one solution, as we showed in example one. This is where graphically our two lines are going to intersect at one point. And what this means is that our slopes are not equal. Now when I have in this when we're talking slopes because we're dealing with linear equations. Now when we have a an equation where or a system that has infinitely many solutions, this tells us that the two lines are the same line um, because the two lines are going to coincide. And this tells us that our two slopes then must be equal if they are the same line. And then the third possibility we could have, which is what we saw in example three, was the case where we have no solution. And what this means is our two linear lines are parallel. And again, for the lines to be parallel, they have to be, um, they have to have equal slopes. So those slopes are equal for these two lines as well. We are also going to introduce um, the idea of a consistent or inconsistent um, system. And a system that has, or that is considered consistent, is a system that has at least one real solution. Now, one real solution com can come from exactly one solution, which is what we call an independent system, or an independently consistent system, or it can come from having infinitely many solutions, and this is what we would call a dependent system. Now, if there are no solutions, then we say that we have an inconsistent system if no solutions exist. Now, systems of equations are usually um, real, they tend to model real life situations really well. Um, so as you're going to see here in a few minutes, we're going to have um, some application type problems. And the question you need to ask yourself when you're trying to figure out if you need a system of linear equations is one, does your problem invo involve more than one unknown quantity? And if it does, then you need to look and say, or see if there are two or more equations or conditions that need to be satisfied. And if one or both of these things occur, then we're gonna have to use a system of linear equations to solve your um, situation. Ooh, so our last example from 7.2, says find the equilibrium point of a supply and demand curve when we're given that our demand equation is given by P equals 81 minus 0.55x and our supply equation is given by P equals 0.125x. Now in this case, um, we could go ahead and use elimination. 
However, it's going to be just as easy to use substitution because both equations are set are set up so that p is equal to the equation itself. So if I take each equation and I say 0.125x equals 81 minus 0.55x, and I get all of my x's on one side, then I have 0.625x equals 81, or x is equal to 120. Now when we're talking about supply and demand, x is our quantity or the number of units. Y then, or P, is going to represent the price at which the, the two, uh, the consumer is willing to pay and the producer is willing to sell. So in order to find the equilibrium point, which is what we're asked to find right here, I found x. Now to solve for y, I'm just going to plug x into one of these equations. And this one here is pretty simple. So we'll go and we'll say p is equal to 0.125 times 120 units. And this is going to give us $15. So our um, equilibrium point is going to be 120 units at a rate of $15 or cents or whatever the, um, dollar, the monetary unit is. And that is going to conclude section 7.2. So on that note, I hope you guys have a good night, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.